Before we get started, I just wanted to note that this information session is a part of, the U of USA Gap Year Fairs, um, which is a is powered by GoOverseas.com. GoOverseas is a community-centered resource for all different types of travel experiences. You can think of us like Yelp, but for meaningful travel programs. You can visit Go Overseas to read verified alumni reviews, find programs, browse articles and guides, and learn about the $5,000 scholarship opportunity that we have opening on February 1st. Here's an image of me surprising one of our gap year scholarship winners. Um, every year, Go Overseas offers a gap year tuition uh, scholarship, so keep an eye out on this email announcement soon. But this is a $5,000 scholarship that goes towards a gap year fair uh, provider's gap year program. We have so much fun awarding the winner every year. Additionally, we have our in-person USA gap year fairs, which are coming to 30 well, now 26 communities around the United States. So if any of these events are near you, we highly recommend that you sign up and join dozens of gap year um, programs from around the world to continue the conversation. And if you are signed up for the West Hartford Fair tonight, we highly recommend that you make it out to our Boston Fair on January 20th. Um, this fair will have a few more providers than what would have been available tonight in West Hartford. If any of these are not too close to you, you can also attend one of our other virtual gap year sessions. Um, we're very excited to have Jason here today to talk about our gap year planning and gap year 101. But at our other events, we will also have other um, consultants covering the same topic. So if you do uh, miss anything in this webinar or don't get the chance to ask all of the questions you wanted to, please tune in to one of these additional events. Now I'm very excited to welcome Jason Saroyan, our keynote speaker and our gap year expert for tonight's event. Um, Jason has more than a decade of experience as a gap year expert and matching young adults of, to their programs of their dreams. Jason will give you a thorough overview of the gap year option for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then we should have about 10 to 15 minutes for Q and A um, towards the end. So I'll go ahead and pass this over to Jason and stop sharing my screen here. Thank you so much, Ashley. And for everyone who's here this evening, thank you for pivoting and being open to a different format for this evening's presentation. Um, rest assured, the providers who you would have met tonight if you'd come in person are eager to speak with you. All of their information can be found on Go Overseas and at the USA Gap Year Fairs. And um, certainly, I'm sure we'll be following up with you <clears throat> later on this evening or sometime later this week so you can get all that information and reach out to them. As Ashley mentioned, my name is Jason Saroyan. I'm an accredited gap year consultant working with the company J2 Guides, which my wife and I founded. Um, Jane and I have about 14 years now of gap year coaching and counseling experience. And prior to that, we were the directors of a gap year organization. And even prior to that, in our 20s, each of us, without knowing each other, were involved with leading many different gap year and team-based experiences. So for the last 25 years, essentially, I've spent the time and energy to really support and engage with young adults to try and encourage them to pursue things that are outside of their comfort zones and meaningfully achieve their goals and, and ultimately manifest the things that they are trying to achieve in their life. Um, all of this happened for me because I also took gap time once I was in college at UC San Diego, and that experience led me to a very fulfilling set of studies later on in undergraduate, as well as, of course, a really fulfilling career. Tonight, I have about a 30-minute slide deck for you that's going to go through the gap year 101. And the place that we always like to start is, what is a gap year? Essentially, a gap year, and as recently redefined by the Gap Year Association, is an intentional period of time devoted to personal growth and exploration through experiential learning opportunities. It's a simple statement, but packed in there, and what you can read between the lines is that gap time is actually really any intentional period of time that an individual can take in their life to move out of what is comfortable, what is known, what is familiar to them, and get out into the world and learn and grow, again, through these hands-on based opportunities. What the definition doesn't state is 
who does it, when they do it, where they go do it, and what they do. And what I want to share with you, if you take home anything from tonight, is that anyone can gap. And what I mean is, yes, the traditional gapper in the United States might be a graduating high school student or someone who is in college, but we work with lots of folks who have recently graduated from school, folks who have been in the professional world and want to take this time to redesign what it is is next for them, the next chapter of their life. And of course, we work with lots of older adults as well who are taking this time as sabbatical or maybe even retirement. Additionally, we say gap year, but that term is actually really a British term. Um, we talk more about gap time in the United States. And the reason I share that is because someone might say graduate from high school and have a summer of gap time before they go on to college, but one can accomplish a lot in those three months. Another person might be accepted as a January or February admit of the school of their dreams, and they might find themselves with more like six months of time after graduating from high school. The typical gapper, someone who might take a year between high school and college or a year off from college, might be taking the better part of nine to 12 months. And there are people who have even longer extended timelines. So gap time and the amount of it is really the amount of time that's right for you. Additionally, there are a tremendous number of motivations uh, that students have and that they pursue during their gap year. Some people are really interested in exploring their professional or educational path before diving headlong into it. So imagine going and having a gap year that was founded on or focused on medicine so that you could discover whether or not you actually wanted to study bio and be pre-med before you go into those classes. As we all, can all guess, that's a huge commitment. It's a really long road. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to know if that's the path you want to go before. And other students are just really curious to get out into the world and spend this time. Whether you choose to go far flung and abroad, like I did, I went to Tanzania during my first period of gap time, or you're interested in staying here in the United States, there's actually a tremendous catalog of offerings that are available to these 17 year old high school grad, all the way up to adults who are in their 80s. So there is quite an array of opportunities out there. Which opportunities are right for you? What opportunities are available to you? We're going to dive into that a little bit later. What's important about this is that a gap year is actually not a journey unto itself. It's not like going straight on to college. It's not like going to community college. It's not like going into the military or going directly into the professional workforce. A gap year is actually about a journey that takes you from point A, wherever you are at the moment of beginning, for most people who are on this call or who are attending on behalf of someone else that's likely gonna be after graduation from high school. And it's about taking you on a journey that is going to ultimately lead you back to the point B that you had your eyes on already. So if that for you is going to a four-year university and you've been applied and you have been accepted, a gap year isn't going to deter you from that. It's not going to defer you from it for a long period. But the journey, while not as straightforward as going directly A to B, is actually the value. The journey, the meander, is where students really get to take all that they have learned up to this point in their life and in the classroom and apply it in a very hands-on, meaningful way to the world. And that worldly-based experience is what they get to take with them now back to that next educational chapter, whether that is a professional setting or going on to some kind of formalized education. And that is where the gold is in this experience for most students. It's about getting to apply what you know, gain experience, and then bring all of that back so that you truly have something to say and a lens of reference to be able to cite once you're in this educational experience. So, it is important to think that the gap year, while not as direct, is actually something that ultimately could be far more rewarding. And when students think a lot about like, oh, it seems like such an unknown, what a risk for me to take. Oftentimes I like to suggest to them, right, but what do you stand to gain? What do you stand to gain by taking this time to complement what is ultimately <clears throat> already a significant part of your education and, and something that you'll definitely be coming back to in the future? When we think about a gap year, there are a few quality ingredients that we strongly encourage any student who's thinking about this to incorporate into their gap time. And the first piece of it is intention. 
<clears throat> excuse me, a gap year doesn't just happen to someone. Um, ultimately, this has to be a choice, just like choosing to go on to college. And so having intention around why you're taking a gap year is really critical for the success of everything that comes to follow. Additionally, building a measure of structure into your gap year, whether your gap year is dedicated to working and making money the entire time, which could be a legitimate gap year, particularly if you're pushing your comfort zone and maybe living somewhere that you're unfamiliar with, or you're actually taking on a job where you've got a level of supervision and mentorship, that high level of structure is going to get you awake every single day, excited about what it is you're doing, and give you enough structure so that you feel like what you're doing is worthwhile. Additionally, and I just mentioned this before, something that sets Gap Year apart from almost anything else that we get to do in life is quality mentorship. So whether you're going on some amazing group-based Gap Year experience or you're taking on a professional apprenticeship, it is these adults who are involved in this, who are passionate about that experience, about that environment that really make the difference for Gappers. It's these people who are investing in your young adults so that they can learn and grow in ways that as other adults in their lives, we may not be able to offer them. And so that level of mentorship is really one of the key hallmarks that you want to be looking for in whatever you choose. And then finally, students who talk about successful gap years talk about having spent some of that time or all of it with people who are their like age. Um, it's really important to note that gap year is about stretching yourself and coming. And what comes right along with stretching yourself is some measure of adversity, right? It's challenge. And we tend to relate well to people who are in our peer cohorts, who are going through the same chapter of life and who are ultimately encountering the same level of challenge at the same time. So that thing that is challenging and exciting and growth filled for that 18 year old in your life might not be something that you as a 40 year old might find as challenging or growth filled. And so we really want to encourage people to be with their peers, people who are gonna get very similar benefits from taking this kind of time together. If you build in these four building blocks, these four ingredients, undoubtedly your gap year is going to feel successful no matter what it is that you choose to incorporate into it. When Jane and I start working with students on their gap year and their gap year planning, we don't actually start with what do you want to do? We actually start with why do you want to do it? And that builds back to that place of intention. It's really critical for us to understand what are students' motivations for taking this time. And there are no wrong motivations in our eyes. Um, many students cite that they are burnt out from school because they've been working so hard or that this time during COVID was really stressful. And what they really need to do is like be out in the world and take a better break from academics. And that's wonderful. If that's your truth, that's great. It's possible that you might relate to yourself as a potential gapper, or you might relate for your child or the student you're here on behalf of to several of the ideas that are up here on the screen. And I'd be curious to see if anybody does relate to one or two or three of them. But these are the most commonly cited reasons that students share that they want to take a gap year. Students want to build maturity. They want to build confidence. They want to address their mental health or their physical health. We have lots of athletes who have been concussed three times playing their sport and their body just needs to heal, right? Again, there's no wrong motivation for taking gap time, but understanding yours is actually literally the starting place. So once you know what your whys are, ultimately then you can start building, okay, so if my why is because I'm feeling like I'm curious about the world and getting to know it better and know myself better, then you're going to be looking for experiences that are going to offer you a chance to do just that. So starting to build out the why becomes the very first step in your gap year planning process. Once you figure out your whys, this is where we start heading into some of the fun stuff like goal setting. And when we look at the macro view, the, the large 30,000 foot view, we have to answer a few questions about gap year for ourselves. So first of all, what are my priorities? What, what is it that I'm hoping to get out of this? The whys might have informed that, but we have to get a bit more granular about it. Because you're curious about the world could be a great why, but curious about what part of the world? Are you curious about language? Are you curious about culture? Are you curious about yourself in the world? Are you curious about urban settings? Is it more of a rural setting? There's a lot to figure out. Included in that will come, am I interested in international destinations, domestic opportunities, 
And ultimately, in the macro view, what's my budget? Do I have to look at tuition-based experiences, things that I'm going to pay to be a part of? Or do we really just need to look at low-cost or work exchange opportunities? Taking these answers into a whole is going to be a really important next step so that we can start addressing the more micro or zoomed-in factors that are going to go about defining our gap time. And it is good to say that the typical student who has, say, 9 to 12 months of gap time in front of them will likely select between three and four completely different experiences to pursue during their gap year. So while there are some really fantastic 9 to 12 month long gap year experiences, even those programs will offer a variety of different activities so that the students are constantly on their growing edge. You can recreate that very same kind of experience on your own by choosing multiple different programs or volunteer experiences or internships that you would cobble together in a mosaic that ultimately creates your gap year. How many of those goals you choose to pursue, whether they're all within the same thread like marine biology or they're spread, spread out amongst different interests that you have, like art and your interest in learning sign language and you're interested in an internship, you're interested in an internship in journalism, they can all be very separate things as well. Once you've identified those major categories, now we get to start look at the in, looking at the individual opportunities and how those particular aspects of a given option will relate to you and help satisfy your goal. For example, how long do you want a given experience to be? You might be really excited about going on a group-based gap year experience for six to eight weeks, but you'd be much more open to an internship for three months. You might be excited about pursuing a cooking course for one week, whereas you might be really excited about doing something like an academic refresher for three months. So figuring out what experiences you want and how long you want to go for will be critical. We talked a little bit about setting, but it's important for students to really think about where they want to be and for how long they want to be there. Some students have never experienced rural-based settings, and that could be a wonderful challenge for them, but they also want to spend time in urban cities. All of these are pieces that you're going to want to figure out for yourself before actually starting to look at specific opportunities that are going to help you fulfill those goals. And then finally, which experiences are you looking to have support and be incorporated into a group-based opportunity? And which ones would you be enjoying and enjoy more for yourself if you were doing them independently or you're a solo traveler? We have lots of students who will choose to do a group-based program, say in the fall of their gap year, but then want to be more independent and travel a little bit more independently on their own later on in their gap time. And so figuring that out will also help you. There's nothing wrong with being a part of a group program or group programs for the entirety of your gap time. And there's certainly nothing wrong with being independent for your entire gap year, but you know you best in figuring out what parameters are critical for you, for your health, for your happiness, for your mental well being. Well, that's the trick of all of this. And that's where the uniqueness of your own gap year planning is going to come into play. Once we've figured out all of that, now we get to start looking at the different kinds of options that are out there. And while this is not a comprehensive slide of what you could pursue, it does actually delineate several of the biggest and commonly, commonly chosen categories of gap year experiences that are out there. So at the USA Gap Year fair, Fairs, almost every single organization that you might encounter would be incorporated into the top one. These are gap year programs. These are facilitated experiences that have dedicated leaders, a set start date, a set end date, a set cohort of peers who are all engaged in this experience together for that particular amount of time. These are highly hands-on for students. They are built to be very growth-filled. They also have the highest price point of anything that you could look at in your gap year. And what do I mean by that? The typical gap year semester, say that goes from 10 to 12 weeks, could range anywhere from $12,000 to $17,000, kind of on the average end. There are outliers on both sides, but that's what you should look towards in terms of pricing for something like that experience. Please note that there are lots of scholarships available, 
529 funds can be used for many of these experiences. And we're gonna get into some of the resources that programs have available to you. So, you know, don't, don't get too much sticker, sticker shock um, from that price tag that I was sharing. And also note that those are likely gonna be the most expensive outlay that you would put into your gap time. Additionally, there's an entire other set of categorical options that would include volunteering. And volunteering could be for as short as a week to upwards of three months or even more. These cost dramatically less than a more organized facilitated gap year program. But instead of group leaders, it's likely that your child will be involved with a supervisor who's there. Instead of a cohort of peers, it's likely going to be a cohort of volunteers who could range anywhere from 17 years old up to you know, folks who are in our parent age. Additionally, there are a tremendous number of internships available to gap year age students where you could even live with peers. There are lots of skills courses, think scuba diving, surfing, cooking, art classes that are much shorter term. And then thousands and thousands of work exchange options where say in exchange for 20 hours a week of your labor as a volunteer, you get to live at that site and you get to eat for free. It's a cost neutral experience. It doesn't cost you anything, but you also likely won't make anything. Here is that amazing set of options that you're gonna to get to choose from and start whittling down again to meet the goals that you define for yourself. This is a great slide to consider screenshotting or taking a photo of with your phone because there's a lot going on here. When we think about a gap year, we think about students moving from their comfort zone into their stretch space. But like moving from any place of learning into a place of greater learning, it's important to go at the right pace for the individual. A great example of this is learning how to drive, right? Lots of young adults are learning how to drive or thinking about that. And we don't take the brand new driver and put them in the driver's seat and say, get, you know, step on the gas, get into this freeway and hit the fast lane 75 miles an hour day one of driving. That's a terrifying scenario for most young adults. It would also be likely a dangerous scenario for everybody involved. That's not the place we start. When we're learning new skills, we enroll in driver's ed. We learn the rules of the road. We get behind the wheel in a parking lot. We have a driving instructor. And all of a sudden, as we start to gain skills and hours and competencies, soon enough, we're driving the city streets, and then we're driving the highway and the slow lane, and then we're able to get into the fast lane and be able to drive with a lot of autonomy, a lot of confidence, and a lot of independence. The gap year is no different from this. Generally, what we would encourage students to do is in the fall, start in the place of greatest support for their gap time, really getting engaged in an experience of trying to educate them, teach them these skills that they want to know, really encourage them towards level of in, levels of independence so that in the winter time, they can take on something that does require a bit more responsibility of them holding the reins. And then ultimately by spring, the vast majority of the gap year students that we work with every year are really out there driving autonomously on their own, right? They're out there traveling on their own. They're living in their own apartments in cities all around the world. They're holding down jobs. They're in great internships. And this is something, while it may not feel like it could be possible dreaming about it now, a year from now, that's exactly what students are doing. Additionally, when we start incorporating in some of these activities like the work exchange, independent travel, internships, the price point does go down. So when we start thinking about budgeting for a gap year, we don't have to think, oh gosh, it's gonna be a $15,000 semester the first one, and then a $15,000 semester the second one. Wow, that's a lot of money. Where's that gonna come from? We can actually start thinking, okay, maybe we're gonna put some resources up front and really put the, the biggest part of our budget there to make sure it's the most supportive experience. And then we can choose experience that ask more of our child but that don't cost as much. And that's a great way to go about budgeting for your gap year. There are lots of questions that families have about gap year, and I want to answer some of the most commonly related questions, but I also see there's some action happening in the chat, so I'm sure we'll turn it over to Ashley in a moment to talk about that. But one of the biggest questions that we get is, what do colleges think about a gap year? And the good news is that the vast majority of colleges in the United States are big proponents of students taking gap time. 
Why? Well, there's been a lot of research done about gap year students abroad, as well as gap year students who are gapping from the United States and intending to go to American universities. And the universities themselves have done research on their own students who have taken gap years to see what the outcomes were. And essentially, all of the data points to the fact that students who take gap time, even a single semester, not only outperform their peers academically every single semester that they are in college, meaning their GPAs are higher than the typical student who is going to that school, and it's higher every semester of their going to school, but they tend to graduate in four years in much higher numbers than the typical student. And I don't know if you've looked at any of that data before, but over 50% of the students who go to a four-year university graduate in six and a half years in this country. Gap time and gappers tend to actually limit that down to four years or four and a quarter years at the most. So gap year students tend to be coming into school very focused. They tend to switch majors a lot less often. They tend to transfer a lot less often. They tend to report much higher satisfaction with the university and the education that they got. So colleges are generally big fans of gap time because it tends to mean that they're gonna have students who are performing well and who they get to retain and have matriculate all the way through. Does that mean every gap year, every college will grant a student a gap year? No, not every university in this country or college in this country will offer a student to do that. So let's say you're a senior right now, you've applied to colleges or maybe you're gonna apply during your gap year. Uh, but if you have applied and you've gotten some acceptances, one of the things you might look into in order to take a gap year is to defer your fall 2024 acceptance and, and make it a fall 2025 acceptance. Most colleges will offer you the chance to do that with just a simple form that you have to fill out and a letter that you would have to write. I can drop a sample letter in the chat a little bit later. Um, not every school does this. It's critical that you investigate with your colleges of choice to make sure that they're able to do it. It is not gonna jeopardize your candidacy to call a school before you've been accepted or even after you've been accepted to say, hi, you know, I'm so interested in coming to your college. Could you tell me about your deferral or deferment policy if I wanted to take a gap year? And if you're not comfortable with sharing your name, you can always just do it anonymously. Hi, I'm interested in coming to your school. Can you tell me about your policy? Again, most colleges are really open to this idea. Can you earn credit, though, during your gap year? Here's a sticking point. While many gap year programs will offer you the opportunity to earn credit during your gap year, very few universities that grant you a chance to take a gap year are gonna be willing to accept college credit that you earn during your gap year. So while your family might be able to pay for it with a 529 fund, that gap year program and those credits are likely to be unacceptable to your school. They're likely gonna say, if you want to remit, this transcript that you've just earned, it will make you a transfer student and you ultimately have to reapply as such. So it's very important before you sign up for credit with a gap year experience, and you don't have to take credit from any gap year program, but before you do that, that you check with your university to make sure it's okay for them that you're planning to enroll in credit. And if it is okay for you to enroll, are they willing to accept the transcript? Again, lots of nuances and details, but these are very commonly asked questions that people that want to inquire about. And then a last big question that we hear about is when should I begin planning? So if you're a junior or a family of a junior on this call, a great time to start looking at gap year is after junior year has ended. So the summer after junior year. And the reason I say that is because junior year tends to be quite stressful for a lot of students. A lot is happening during that time. But the summer tends to be a lot quieter. In the fall of senior year, a lot of attention is put on applying to college. So there's no sweet spot unless you begin in the summer. Once college applications are in, presuming that's what you choose to do, then you can circle back to this gap time. And that would actually bring you around to this timeline. So if you're a senior, maybe you've already applied to colleges or you're planning to apply during your gap year, great. Now is the moment for you to start really looking intently at gap year opportunities, figuring out your whys, figuring out your parameters, and ultimately starting to look at options. Um, Gap year programs have begun enrolling for the fall of 2024. They will be at near capacity by around the end of April in many different sections of those programs. So you don't have a tremendous amount of time to wait. 
Additionally, as we all know, senior year is full of a lot of fun in the spring. It tends to be the time where we see a lot of big sporting events. It's when prom happens. It's when graduation happens. That is a time where many gap year students go MIA because they're really busy. And so planning your gap year is in this amazing moment of January through April, January through May at the latest. Then there tends to be a bit of a hiatus, and then they come back to it in June. So if you're thinking about a gap year, now is a great time for you to start investigating, start to follow programs on social media, have a free brainstorming call with a gap year consultant, whatever it is, this is the time to begin doing some of your research. To that end, I want to share this slide, and then I think it'll be a good time for me to share some uh, things in the chat and to address some additional questions. So the USA Gap Year Fairs have done a stellar job for many years now of cor corralling together just an, an amazing array of Gap Year programs and opportunities for you to look at. This is a great place to start. And I would love for your eyes to go over to the column that is on the far right that talks about financial support. It might be hard to read on your screen. Don't worry, it's in the online guide as well. But there are many ways for you to address finances and support through gap year programs. Almost every single one of the programs listed on here offers some kind of merit or need-based aid. Additionally, there are scholarships for BIPOC uh, identifying students and lots and lots of other aid that you could take advantage of. Um, all of the accredited gap year consultants also offer financial aid. So if you're looking for support for gap year consulting, that's a possibility too. But note that there are a lot of great programs here that you could begin looking to and a lot of options that will probably get you inspired to think about taking gap time. So with that, I'm going to pause because I've been speaking for a while now. And let's turn it over to Ashley. And she probably has some questions that could use some answering. Great. Thank you so much, Jason, for the wonderful presentation you just gave. And every time I listen to your presentation, I learn something new. So thank you very much for that. Um, right now is a great time for um, our attendees to throw any questions you might have into the chat. Um, and while you may be thinking of a question, I have one right off the bat for you, Jason. Um, a quick question that I hear from time to time, which is, what if my student doesn't want to go to college or they don't feel like a year is enough or adversely too long? How do we navigate those changes and make sure that they're prepared and ready to start back up again? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one of the things I think that's great about gap time is just that it is actually time. Um, it is time to be able to spend as a young adult to consider what it is you want in that first chapter of your adult life. And many students, and particularly right now, I think coming out of the pandemic, are not ready to say, I know that I want to go to college, or I'm 100% sure that I want to go to college, or I feel like the value proposition of college is one that I can wrap my head around. Um, a lot of young adults are being very discerning. We're in a moment of uh, what one of our colleagues referred to as polycrises, right? We are in a political landscape, we're in a geopolitical landscape, we're in a climate-based landscape that is presenting a lot of daunting challenges to young adults who realize they're inheriting all of this. They know that if they can't figure it out, it's not going to get figured out. That That is the perception that a lot of young adults share with me. So if this is an amount of time, your gap year or gap time, that is going to help that young adult figure out what is the right next path, that is probably time really well spent. I can tell you that when I started senior year, the college I thought I was going to go to was a very small liberal arts college in Portland. And instead, by the end of the time I had to make that decision, which effectively was the end of senior year, I had decided to go to a much larger, larger university in Southern California. I would not have known that that would have been the right fit for me at the beginning of that fall when I was a senior. A lot of growth happens in those six months. And so it's great if we can honor our young adults and be able to offer them a little more time for them to have that growth. Also, these additional experiences help really inform a student about what it is they might want to do and whether it is that four-year college path or whether it's taking a semester of gap time and then going into community college and spending a semester doing community college maybe an additional year or thinking about transferring. There are a lot of paths available open to, you and open to young adults. And so I would really encourage this to be a time of exploration 
It's not a nap year, right? It's not a student living in your basement playing Xbox for the entire time. This is actually about getting engaged in the world. It's about getting out there. And that can happen from home, but ideally a young adult is getting out there and spending a bit of time on their own two feet. I'm not sure if I addressed all of the aspects of that question, Ashley. Oh, I think you answered that wonderfully. I do have Thanks. a second question here that I've come up with for you, which is, can you take a gap year in the middle of college? You really can. Um, that's when I took gap time. Uh, I was a junior in college and I had been doing great. School was going great. But by the time I hit junior year, I was really burnt out. And so there are actually quite a few gap year experiences that are represented here at the USA Gap Year Fairs that are open to people 18 to 22. So many of these programs are dedicated to folks within that age range. If a student prefers a cohort of folks who have already been in college, there are several really excellent um, experiential education-based programs just for college students. And I mean, we're going beyond the typical study abroad, right? This isn't just going to study, and there's nothing wrong with this, but this is not just going to study at a university in Spain or a university in, in France, right? This is actually about getting out into the world in meaningful ways. My gap time was studying conservation and wildlife biology in Tanzania. I I got a full semester's worth of credits. I was never in a classroom one single day that I was there, but I came out proficiently conversational in Swahili. I had a chance to do an independent study project with a group of hunter gatherers living way out in the wild for a month by myself and ultimately gained a lot of credits in biology and conservation and wildlife biology. So there are ways for a student, even if you're not interested in that topic, to be involved and, and gain credit while you're in college. So there's a tremendous array. And if you want to move away from the academic while in college, you can also do all of those volunteering options that I mentioned, or all of those internships that I mentioned, or all of that work exchange that we were talking about. So all of these options are available to someone 17 plus. It's just a matter of what co cohort of peers you want to be in. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have a question in the chat here from Ned asking, what if my student thinks that he wants to apply for college after completing some or all of his gap year, um, is there a guidance counselor type of person to help choose a college? That's such a great question and a really important one. I, we're seeing more and more seniors who have decided not to apply to college during senior year, just because it felt overwhelming. Um, so one can absolutely apply to college during their gap time. Of course, it would have to happen in the fall, right? So let's just say you have a graduating senior now um, and that senior didn't apply to college. In the fall of 2024, they would have to apply to college if they want to go to a four-year university in the fall of 2025. And so in order to do that, generally a student would, in the spring of their senior year, start researching the colleges that they're interested in going to and make some visits to schools and go see some campuses. In the summer, they would fill out as much of the Common App as they can, and usually the Common App opens in the summer. Sometimes other specific colleges have their own application and those open in the summer as well. You would do as much of that as you can. You'd go on your amazing fall gap experience for whatever number of weeks that is. And then you would come back at the end of November um, and or early December, and you would apply to college as you might normally as a senior in, in high school. And so that could be a really excellent opportunity. Some gap year programs are stationary enough that you might be able to apply even while you're on there. So if you want to do early action or early decision, you can apply even while you're on those gap year programs. If you chose that you wanted to apply at the end of your gap year, Remember that ultimately effectively means taking a second gap year because we apply to four-year universities almost a year in advance of when we want to go. So it is important to note that if you feel like you want to go to a four-year school the fall after your gap year, you would have to have applied to it at least by the fall of your gap time. Great. Another fun one. <laughs> How do I apply for a gap year program? That's such a good one. Yeah, how do you do it? Well, thankfully it's not like the college application process. So um, if we're looking at those more facilitated gap year programs, again, these are the kind that you're gonna find in that uh, USA Gap Year Fairs catalog or at a USA Gap Year Fairs kind of event. All of these programs 
are looking for qualified candidates on a rolling admission. What do I mean by a qualified candidate? Well, every program has their kind of archetypal student that they're able to accommodate and be able to support. So the first aspect of that is the student is really excited about it, right? So if you're applying to a wilderness leadership program, hopefully you're really excited about the fact that you're gonna spend 50 days sleeping under a tarp in Patagonia and climbing mountains. And if you can't demonstrate that you're excited about that, it's probably not a good fit for you. The program is going to tell you, hey, this doesn't seem like a fit. What it sounds like, what you want to do is go on an eating tour of amazing food in Europe. There's a different program for that. You should apply for that program, right? So firstly, it's about interest. If your interest resonates with the program and, and is a shared aligned set of goals, then the program is going to want to make sure that they can support you from a physical health standpoint and a mental health standpoint. Um, are your abilities, literally your physical abilities, something that the program can accommodate? Um, again, if you're a student who utilizes, say, a, a, a walking device or utilizes a wheelchair, that might mean that your, that your options that are available might be a particular set of possibilities abilities, whereas other options might not be available to you, not because they don't want to be, just because of the nature of what it is that they do. If you're a student who is diabetic and you need to have insulin that has to be refrigerated, that is a particular set of parameters that a program is going to be able to say, we can accommodate that, we can't accommodate that. If you're a student who wants to talk to your therapist every week via Zoom, great, some programs are able to accommodate that, other programs are not able to accommodate that. You're a student who just recently graduated from a therapeutic-based program um, for whatever reason that you had to be there. Some programs will say, great, we need you to have successfully been out of that program for six months. Other programs will say a year. Other programs will say, great, you graduated. We spoke with your counselor and you seem like a great fit. Gap year programs in general are not therapeutic in nature. They do not have psychological staff who work for them, who are on program with them. There's a completely different set of programs out there for a student who has those needs. But assuming that you don't have that need, then a gap year program is gonna weigh all of these things. You're gonna fill out a few questions that are not like writing your personal essay for college, right? It doesn't require 14 sets of adult eyes to make sure that everything is perfect. You're just gonna write your answers. Hopefully it's gonna be compelling. You're gonna have an interview with that program and optimally you're gonna be accepted. Generally, when we're working with students, we do not have students apply to one more than one program at once, right? We're going to try and help identify the perfect program for you, and then you're going to apply to that program because the odds are if you feel like you're a good candidate for that program, the program is going to feel that way too. Hopefully that was a good answer for you, Madeline. Thank you, Jason. I have sure. one, one more uh, follow-up question to the sure. that I had asked earlier. Oh, actually, you know what? We'll prioritize this. From Marissa in the chat, she said, if my daughter is a junior, would she be applying for any of these programs now or not until senior year? Oh, I love it. That's That's a really interesting insight and a thought. Thankfully, you don't need to apply now. You would apply senior year. Most of the time, gap year programs or experiences are looking at most to a few months ahead. So for example, you could apply right now for a fall 2024 start, or you could apply for a spring 2025 start, right? Essentially the next gap year cycle, but most programs aren't taking applications for fall of 2025. They're not ready for that. And so they wanna make sure that a student, you know, is re ready to really think about their gap year. So thankfully you don't have to do that now, but again, this would be a great time, Marissa, to be able to start thinking about what are the goals um, that our family has? What is the budget? Um, you know, Start working with your child to think about, okay, what are your goals, sweetheart? What are the things that you're aspiring to do? Why are you taking a gap year? And then kind of move from there and start looking at these programs. I will say that lots of people, about half of the people who come to the USA Gap Year Fairs that I meet are juniors because they're getting a head start. They're getting a jump on these experiences. They want to start following X program on social media and see all the awesome videos and reels that that program is putting out. Nothing wrong with that. That's great. It's a very passive way of starting to do the research, and that can become a very active um, jumping uh, springboard in the future. Um, great. Any additional questions, Ashley? No, no additional questions. That actually uh, touched a little bit on my question I was going to follow up with was, um, can you apply for a gap semester as a junior in high school? 
Yeah, and and really, I don't know of any programs that um, would be encouraging of that. I, I think they would actually want for you to wait until you're in your senior year, um, or at least certainly have finished your junior year. Um, I'm sure uh, any program would be happy to have a, a, a junior who's finished their junior year and is in the summertime think about their program. But before that, it probably, they would ask you to wait. Great. Thank you. And uh, thanks for everyone for the awesome questions. And thank you, Jason, for the wonderful presentation. Um, you're making me want to take a gap year now. So. <laughs> Let's talk about it, Ashley. You, <laughs> we would love that. We, we will have conversations with anybody who wants to take gap time. You can always feel free to reach out. Yes, and if you have any more questions for Jason, um, we'll send his contact information along with this recording to you all to follow up. So thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Um, and thank you, Jason. My pleasure.